In the pursuit of sustainable energy solutions, Google has embarked on an ambitious journey toward carbon-free energy with its geothermal power project. The company's goal is to power its data centers and campuses worldwide using renewable sources, and to achieve that, Google aims to lead by example in reducing carbon emissions and mitigating environmental impact. Today, we're going to explore just that in terms of objectives, mechanisms, and implications of Google's geothermal power project, along with its partnership with Project Innerspace and the controversial debate surrounding hydraulic fracturing. Let's get started. Before we dive into Google's geothermal power project, let's take a look at what actually is geothermal energy. For starters, it's essentially just the energy harnessed from the Earth itself. Think of it like solar energy, but instead of capturing the sun's heat, we move toward the Earth's core, which is almost 6,000 degrees Celsius hot. To put things into perspective, this natural heat is approximately 10% hotter than the sun's surface, and ever since scientists discovered this fact, they've been trying to come up with a mechanism to utilize this free resource. Finally, in 1904, Prince Piero Ginori Conti of Italy was able to successfully use geothermal energy to power four light bulbs through a geothermal generator. At that time, the output was no doubt small, but it provided the base for future experiments, and now multiple geothermal stations are planted across the globe. The concept behind geothermal plants is really smart, as water is pumped through the inner hot layers of the planet, and as water moves through the hot springs, it absorbs the heat, turns into steam, rises back up, and is used to spin turbines which generate electricity. Not only is this natural steam an absolutely free fuel, but it also takes very little input overall as the water is recreated upon cooling. Unlike fossil fuels, geothermal energy is renewable, sustainable, and emits minimal greenhouse gases. As a result, every nation is trying to extract the maximum out of this free resource, so much so that the global geothermal power generation capacity stood at that impressive 16,355 megawatts of energy at the end of 2023. Google was already well aware of this potential. As a result, it started working with Fervo Energy, a clean energy startup back in May 2021, and became the world's first corporate company to sign an agreement for next-generation geothermal power. The next-generation geothermal energy is an advanced method that allows engineers to harness geothermal energy more efficiently, even at places where the steam reservoirs are not easily accessible. We'll dive deep into how it works shortly. Google has been known worldwide to adopt renewable energy for its power requirements. In 2007, it achieved total carbon neutrality. Then, the requirements grew, and so did Google's ambition to operate on carbon-free fuel. As a result, in 2017, it became the world's biggest corporate energy buyer by purchasing 1,600 megawatts of renewable energy. They invested more than $7 billion in solar panels and wind turbines, which generates around 5,500 megawatts. This energy is enough to power more than a million domestic homes, but only fulfills 40% of the company's energy needs. As solar and wind energy are not 100% consistent with their output, and are dependent on natural variables like wind and sunlight, Google has decided to now invest its money in geothermal energy, leading to the Fervo contract. Fervo promises to deliver 24-7 carbon-free, next-generation geothermal energy, which is exactly what Google wants, and with this, Google hopes to power all its data centers and campuses across the globe with clean, renewable energy by the year 2030. But there is one key player we've not talked about yet that will be pivotal for Google to attain the dream of 100% renewable energy reliance by 2030. It is Project Inner Space. Project Inner Space is the leading independent organization dedicated to the global development of geothermal energy. Their mission is to remove the barriers to the exponential growth and development of geothermal energy worldwide. They aspire to accomplish this by solving two problems, locating thermal energy resources across the globe and managing the cost. Project Inner Space has divided this into two phases. Phase 1, which is subsurface resource characterization, includes formulating a team to scale geothermal development by pinpointing the locations where heat energy is close to the surface. It also involves identifying what different types of hot rocks could be present in the area of interest. 
This phase will include high-resolution geothermal prospecting maps. To find out the quality and depth of geothermal resources within a 100km radius of the world's major population centers, so that the produced energy is easily transported to the public. Moreover, these geothermal maps will be uploaded on the internet, where various startups, industries, and funding entities can utilize the information to reduce pre-project subsurface and project siting risks. Phase 2 is different from Phase 1 in the sense that it focuses on the financial aspects. Geothermal energy is fairly new, and many of the innovative ideas are not deployed yet due to fear of malfunctioning. In this context, Project Innerspace is willing to fund these companies to produce and run their advanced ideas. Now, this is where things get interesting, as Google has just signed a contract with Project Innerspace at the end of 2023, focusing on the adoption and expansion of geothermal energy worldwide. Through this collaboration, Google aims to leverage the expertise and resources of Project Innerspace to accelerate the development and deployment of geothermal energy technologies. Google's geothermal energy project is based around next-generation geothermal energy technology, which is often referred to as Enhanced Geothermal Systems, or EGS, or Engineered Geothermal Systems. Unlike traditional geothermal systems that rely on naturally occurring pockets of hot water or steam close to the Earth's surface, EGS aims to create artificial reservoirs in hot rocks deep underground, thereby vastly expanding the potential locations for geothermal power production. Here's how it works. Geothermal reservoirs suitable for EGS are typically located several kilometers beneath the Earth's surface. The first step is to identify regions with the right geological characteristics, specifically areas with hot rocks, but lacking in natural permeability or fluid content necessary for conventional geothermal systems. Once a suitable site is identified, deep wells are drilled into the hot rock formations. These wells can extend several kilometers below the surface, reaching depths where the temperatures are high enough to produce geothermal energy. Just to get an idea, the wells can go as deep as 2 kilometers, which is more than double the height of the Burj Khalifa, the tallest skyscraper in the world. After drilling, water is injected into the well at high pressure. The water moves out of the tube into the soil, causing the surrounding rock to fracture. This process, known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking, creates an interconnected network of fractures through which water can flow. Fracking is an incredibly controversial topic and will be discussed shortly, so stick around to see why. Once the fractures are created, water is continuously pumped into the well. As the water circulates through the fractures in the hot rock, it absorbs heat and becomes pressurized. The heated water then rises into a separately designed well present above the first tube. This one is empty and specifically installed to carry out the produced steam. Back at the surface, the hot water or steam is used to drive turbines connected to generators, producing electricity. Here, the steam may be directly used to drive turbines or pass through a heat exchanger to generate steam from water. After passing through the turbines, the cooled water is then re-injected into the reservoir through injection wells. This closed-loop system allows for continuous circulation of the geothermal fluid, maintaining pressure and maximizing energy extraction. These EGS operations require careful monitoring of factors such as temperature, pressure, and fluid flow to ensure efficient and safe operation. Advanced technologies such as fiber optic sensors and seismic imaging are also employed to regularly monitor reservoir conditions and detect any potential issues. All the monitoring is worth it because the benefits of EGS are simply unbelievable. In return for the investment, Google will get an abundant resource of never-ending renewable and clean energy that is available all the time and does not require much revamping once it has started working. However, there is still one big drawback to EGS – fracking. Fracking involves injecting high-pressure fluid into underground rock formations to release natural gas or oil. The fracking fluid uses up to 8 million liters of water, which can satiate the needs of 65,000 households. Not only that, it also uses up several thousand tons of sand, along with 200,000 liters of chemicals. The idea behind this is to create multiple tiny cracks in the soil. The sand will prevent the cracks from filling back in, and the chemicals will kill off bacteria, condense water, and dissolve water. The fracking fluid is pulled out, which opens the way for the stuck natural gas and steam to be recovered, after which the soil is sealed again. 
So what's the problem, one might ask? Well, the problem is that the chemicals used in fracking can contaminate the underground water to the degree that the water can't be purified in a filtration plant. The chemicals involved in the process vary from allergic to carcinogenic and extremely toxic. These chemicals can seep into the underground environment and have been found in drinking water supplies. The United States of America has even banned fracking in various areas like Vermont, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York State. The official ban on fracking has been a long time coming because fossil fuel extraction involves almost the same process. Vermont, despite having minimal natural gas reserves, implemented a ban on fracking in 2012 as a precautionary measure to protect its environment and water resources. Similarly, Maryland and New York, with relatively small reserves of natural gas, enacted bans in 2017 and 2020 respectively, citing environmental and public health concerns. Interestingly, in theory, there is still a way to filter out the toxins from water, but that's just a theory for now. And since there have not been any long-term studies done on the post-fracking purified water, we don't know if it actually works. All in all, Google's geothermal power project represents a significant step towards achieving carbon-free energy and combating climate change. By harnessing the Earth's natural heat, Google aims to power its operations with renewable energy sources, thereby reducing its reliance on fossil fuels and mitigating its environmental footprint. However, the project brings with itself some really detrimental consequences, like contamination of a vital natural resource, water. And although science offers a potential way out, is it really going to be that effective? If not, then is geothermal energy, with all its promise and glory, really worth it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and if you liked the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up.